On January 6, 2021, a mob of Donald Trump supporters who believed his rhetoric that the November 2020 election was stolen stormed the U.S. Capitol to stop lawmakers from certifying Joe Biden's victory. Trump's role in the siege and whether it should make him ineligible to run for re-election is at the heart of the case brought before the Supreme Court Thursday on whether the likely Republican nominee must be excluded from ballots in the state of Colorado because he engaged in an insurrection on January 6. Donald Trump incited that insurrection. Mark Raber, a leading expert in constitutional law on insurrections, is one of the many scholars who filed an amicus brief against Trump. He was told there were people in the crowd with weapons who intended to invade Congress. He responded by saying, when there's fraud, you don't use the usual means. You fight. You fight like hell. A reasonable person could say, given Trump's behavior, he intended to inspire an insurrection and participate. The case is based on the 14th Amendment, written in 1866 after the end of the Civil War, to keep former Confederates, officials from the 11 southern states that seceded from the United States, to protect the institution of slavery from returning to power. Section 3 disqualifies from holding office a person who swore an oath to support the Constitution and then engage in insurrection. Trump says the case is part of Biden's witch hunt against a political opponent, a claim the administration denies. His lawyers argue that January 6 was not an insurrection, that Trump was only exercising his free speech rights. They say Section 3 does not apply to presidents and cannot be used to disqualify Trump. So does Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law professor who defended Trump in the past. In the absence of congressional action, I don't believe the 14th Amendment is, is self-enforcing. Otherwise, why would you need... Article 5 of the 14th Amendment, it explicitly gives Congress the power uh, to make these decisions. Six of the nine Supreme Court justices were appointed by Republican presidents, including three by Trump. But despite their ideologies, these justices will contend with the same historical facts, presented in another amicus brief by 25 leading historians, including Alan J. Lifman, professor of history at American University. It's going to be very difficult. For them to contradict the historical evidence we present in our brief that Trump is covered, that it doesn't require another act of Congress or a conviction, and the section wasn't just meant for ex-Confederates. However, given the political magnitude of the ruling's impact, the Supreme Court may decline to make a final decision and leave it to Congress. In the coming months, the court will also likely deliberate on Trump's appeal on a separate federal election interference case prosecuted by special counsel Jack Smith that was rejected by a federal appeals court Tuesday. Patsy Widakuswara, VOA.